Hello, welcome to Contest Style Rhythm for tenor guitar. I'm Daniel Carwile. I'm a champion fiddler. I've been playing almost 25 years. Having grown up in Alabama, I was exposed to lots of old time and bluegrass music and lots of wonderful fiddlers. After two or three years of playing, though, I remember my mom and my dad taking me to a contest in Nashville, Tennessee called the Grand Masters, of which I later won, about 20 years later to be exact. And I was exposed to a new style there that I'd never heard before that's actually known as Texas Contest Style. And it intrigued me, all the variation and melodic development that the fiddlers were using and the guitar players were playing much more than just a 1-4 and a 5 chord. They were playing all kinds of elaborate passing chords and cool bass lines. Uh, at that time, at that early age, I really could not articulate what it was they were doing. All I knew was it was cool and I liked it. And that's where the interest started for me and I started getting my hands on all kinds of recordings of great Texas fiddlers and I started copying what they were doing trying to simulate uh, my own style, my own voice within their tradition and I would say by the mid 80's, a couple of years later I actually broke down and bought one of these guitars, a tenor guitar which I thought was quite appealing as a matter of fact because it only has four strings and I thought hey this is a lot like the violin four strings I can handle that it's not quite as hard as standard guitar which has six strings I was thinking at the time but I think all of them are a challenge regardless how many strings they have you just have to buckle down and practice right um, but the first tenor guitar player I actually saw play who's absolutely one of my favorites and one of the best as far as I'm concerned. His name is Jerry Thomason and he's the son of the great late great Texas innovator and fiddler Benny Thomason and I was amazed at how he could just get from one place to the next on, on the neck of the guitar so quickly and come up with such uh, variation and do lots of cool rhythmic ideas with his right hand that certainly complemented uh, the fiddle player. So I, I bought the guitar and, and was bought several recordings that actually had Jerry on them and I would just put on headphones and listen intently to what he was doing and I would then stop the recording and sit down and just noodle around and try to figure out different ways to play a certain chord. You know, like I might take a C chord and I would learn it in different inversions on the neck of the guitar. You might say I'm playing um, an arpeggio. And that's all I was doing, in a sense, was harmonizing an arpeggio. At the time, I didn't know really what I was doing. I was just basically doing it by ear and just finding these chords. And then I started to recognize the chords uh, on the recordings and started putting and piecing these uh, different progressions and bass lines together in different motions with the uh, left hand. And before I knew it, I was just having a blast. And I've been playing this guitar, as I said earlier, for about 20 years now, and I have a, just a blast playing with students of mine and with other fiddlers at competitions. And uh, I think tenor works extremely well with a standard six-string guitar. They complement one another. Uh, lots of times at contests you'll find you'll have two or three six-string guitars, standard guitars, all playing at the same time. And in a perfect world, I think that's a, a, an ideal kind of situation. But we do not live in a perfect world, and what, lots of times the bass, the bass line that the guitar players are actually playing, each player has his or her own identity, a bass line identity, if you want to call it that. But if you get two or three standard guitars together, you might have one line going this direction while another line's going this direction, another one's going this direction, and it can be... Uh, quite hard to uh, understand or decipher what they're doing. It's just a, a mess. It's very muddy. There's a certain energy, there's a certain uh, power or effect of having that much volume surrounding you as a fiddler and I can attest to that. It really pumps you up and gets you into the moment. But in a real sense the bass lines are muddy. So me personally, and over the years I've always preferred this setup with just one standard guitar and a tenor because the range of the tenor, where it falls, the voice of the tenor, it falls nicely with the uh, standard guitar. It's not quite as low as the standard guitar, so it's not going to conflict with that bass line. And 
you can be going moving in parallel motion in the same direction as that standard guitar's bass line or you can be going in contrary motion the opposite direction and it really works and that's why I like it I don't think they get on top of one another whatsoever and uh, I, that's just my theory but you can certainly have more than one guitar if you want if you want it if you have too many standard guitars they'll cover up the tenor guitar so you have to be careful with that all right so I guess the next thing I want to do is just talk about some basic progressions. Most fiddle tunes in the contest style tradition are in three common keys. Okay, there, there are more keys than this. Of course, there are 12 major keys. But I find that I encountered these three keys more than any others. And that would be the key of G, the key of A, and the key of D. So what I've done and what I plan to do on this video for you just to get you started. Some of you may already be familiar with tenor and that's great. Maybe you'll, I'll expose you to some different progressions, some different chords you're not familiar with. Um, but in each key I'm going to cover what I call a basic skeletal progression. Okay, what I mean by that is I'm going to play a one chord going to a four chord, going back to the one and then a five, then another one chord, then another four chord, then a five chord, and then a split bar which is a quick five and a quick one. Some of you that may be new terminology. All that really means is the one chord is the chord that's formed over the first note of your scale. If I'm in the key of G, my one chord would be G. My four chord would be G, A, B, C. It's the fourth note of that major scale. Then I form a triad over that which would be a C major chord. And then my fifth chord of that scale would be G, A, B, C, D. So I'm going to play a D major chord at that point. So that's what I mean by that. This is a skeleton progression, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 4, 5, 5, 1. And this basic progression can be used over, well, in the key of G, it can be used over tunes like Leather Bridges or Bitter Creek. Uh, in D, it could be used over Sop in the Gravy. In A, common tunes like Great Eagle or Sally Gooden. Um, you'll find there are other tunes that will have chords that kind of break this pattern. And that's cool, that's fine. But hopefully you'll learn some chords in different places to play them and then you just need to know what the form of tune is that you're actually playing. If the progression goes a different direction than what we're doing and what I'm going to demonstrate today, that's fine. All you have to do is know, okay, well I'm playing over a D chord, let's say. And you go, okay, well I have a D chord, I can play it here, I can play it here, I can play it here. And I have to hold it for X number of beats. It's really not that big a deal, but this is certainly a great place for you to start. And uh, sort of create uh, or increase your harmonic or chordal vocabulary as we say with your left hand. Okay, But with that said I need to make one other point before we start playing. I talked to a fiddling friend of mine in Texas one time and, and he made an awesome point. I never have uh, forgotten this. It's very very important to remember. He said a lot of people get really hung up in their left hand. They try to come up with all these cool lines and cool chords and and create a cool groove. The groove is extremely important, absolutely. And your timing, keeping a steady beat, is most important. But what this person told me, and I agree totally, he said, I would rather somebody have a solid right hand and have a limited chord vocabulary with their left as to have somebody with a, a complex chord vocabulary, in other words, they can play all over the neck of the guitar, but they're a little unsteady with their right hand. Time and time again I've seen players when they learn a new bag of tricks or some new progressions, they get into the moment, their adrenaline's pumping, their heartbeat's racing, and then they start rushing on you. There's nothing any worse than that. Nothing any worse as a fiddle player in a competition or even playing in the living room of someone's home to have to feel like you have to stomp a hole in the floor just to let them know where the beat is. That, that's bad. Okay, so what I would encourage you to do is focus on the right hand get a steady groove going. The best way to do that is fall in love with a metronome. Okay, play along with that metronome. For years, I, I as a kid, I, I hardly ever played with a metronome. I thought the thing was broken. So I bought another one. I tried it and darn, it was broken as well. And then after a few years, I realized, look, the metronomes are not broken. I couldn't stay with the metronome. I thought the metronome was experiencing difficulty staying with me. I know that's quite funny, but that's the way I felt about it at the time. And, and like many of my students, I just refrained to practice with the thing. So what I would tell you is get comfortable with your chord progressions. Get them under your fingers. Start slowly. 
and then work your way into using the metronome, okay? And start slowly and just gradually speed up each day. And you will get up to tempo, I promise, no problem. I would also encourage you to play along with fiddle recordings. That's probably the number one thing that I did. My brother played standard guitar, and uh, he played with me for many, many years as we traveled across the country. And he did that more than anything else. He would play along with albums all of the time. And, of course, an album, you would hope, I know the albums he, he was actually listening to, uh, the albums were right on the money, right in time. So that helped his timing, because he had a, a nice intuitive sense of uh, time. So play with a steady beat, that's the most important thing you do. I would rather you play three chords and play rock solid right on the money, right on the beat, as to play 20 chords and, and, and your timing be up and down. Okay?